Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm doing a Blu-ray update. First film is House of a Thousand Corpses, 2003. It's just an upgrade from my DVD. I gotta say, this is probably one of the best Blu-ray transfers I've ever seen. Just brilliant. Picture quality is phenomenal, 10 out of 10. Got Dr. Satan there. It's all the characters in the film. It's rated R for sadistic violence, sexuality, and language. I really love the uh, this film. I actually like this a little bit more than The Devil's Rejects. You know, I just like that whole Dr. Satan myth or whatever you want to call it a lot of people say because it's kind of over the top but i really love it love that aspect of the film speaking of the devil's rejects we have the devil's rejects from 2005 love this film as well it's a little bit more serious tone than house of a thousand corpses but i love it Love all the characters. I heard that Rob Zombie might do a prequel to these films, which definitely looking forward to if they come out with that. This is not a, uh, a great release because there's no special features ported over from the DVD, so it's pretty much bare bones, which kind of pisses me off, but I just got this for the picture quality. Picture quality is not that great either. I mean, <laughs> I, I I guess because it was shot with 16 millimeter and not 35, but it just it doesn't look very good. There's a lot of grain in there, you know. It just I don't know, <laughs> but uh, it's decent decent release. Not great, not horrible. We have Red State, phenomenal film. I love it. Basically about a kid who is looking for sex and he contacts a woman and I guess she has other plans and she sets him up with this radical Catholic uh, church with these crazy people that are <laughs> out of their mind. They wind up tying him up and torturing him and goes a lot further than that. There's a huge gunfight in there and the FBI gets involved. I'm just going to leave it at that. Love the film though. John Goodman was incredible in this one. It's loaded with special features as you can see. Making of. Has Tarantino's stamp of approval there. You want to read the synopsis pause love the film I love it definitely recommend it we have brawl in cell block 99 it's about a guy who has relationship problems with his fiance Winds up dealing drugs and he works himself up in the drug game and the cops get involved. He winds up in a shootout with the police and gets sent to prison. And I guess one of the guys from the crew that got arrested threatens that they'll kill his pregnant wife if he doesn't kill a guy in cell block 99. So he's got a pretty much, you know... <laughs> get kicked out of one prison after the other to get to this cell block where this infamous prisoner is to kill him so he could save his wife and unborn child. Love this film. Love it. A little bit on the depressing side, but I love it. Vince Vaughn was amazing in this film.
Got Jennifer Carpenter in there. Definitely recommend this to everybody. It's unrated, I think. Yeah, it's unrated. Anyway, we have a Nightmare on Elm Street double feature, part two and three on Blu-ray. I got this for Dream Warriors. Oops. Not a big fan of a Nightmare on Elm Street part two. Part three is definitely my favorite in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Love it. It's got special features in there as well. Love Dream Warriors. I mean, Elm Street 2 isn't bad, just not my favorite. Love Dream Warriors, though. Probably end up getting the box. I guess it's like 40 bucks, but I just, you know. I mean, Elm Street isn't, you know, I'm just not crazy about the whole franchise. Not like Halloween with Michael Myers and, or even Chucky. I, I'm just not a huge fan. Still up part three, though. We have Titanic. Got it with the slip cover for a decent price. It's a four disc set, two DVDs and two Blu-rays. I love this film. Picture quality is just incredible. I actually never owned this film on DVD or Blu-ray for some reason. Definitely happy to get it on Blu-ray. Love the film. It's a little bit long, but you know, I remember when this came out of the theaters. I saw it two or three times. Brilliant filmmaking, though. I love it. Kate Winslet's gorgeous, I thought, yeah. Nailed the role. Beautiful. She's got that English, uh, love her English accent. And we have It, 2017 film. I gotta say, with all the hype, I just, you know, <sighs> I got bored of it, guys. I just, you know, I watched, I got probably 45 minutes in and just, just fell flat for me. I don't know, maybe if I caught, I, maybe I caught it on a bad day. I don't know what the problem was, but I just was not into it. I, I can't explain why. I just wasn't feeling it, guys. I'll probably give it another shot, you know, because so many people were, raving about it yeah i like the the pennywise character i thought he definitely looked the part i just didn't like you know the kids were annoying and i just i don't know <laughs> and i'm a huge fan of the 1990 original and I heard it all. Everybody that was a fan of the original said this was like 10 times better, but I just, just did not get into it, you know. But I'll definitely give it another watch, you know. In the future, I'm just, wasn't crazy about it. And we have Leatherface, which absolutely blew me away. A lot of people said it's garbage. It's basically, they show Leatherface growing up as a preteen. And he does something to get himself put in a mental hospital. And basically, it's 
Leatherface's mother against the sheriff and the sheriff gets his revenge on the mother for killing his daughter because I guess they played a sick prank and killed the sheriff's daughter. Just loads of gore in this one. This probably is the goriest entry into the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise since Texas Chainsaw Massacre the beginning. You know, you got decapitations. There's a scene where a guy gets a chainsaw completely through his stomach and there's flesh flying and it is just, you know, in your face gore. Gore effects are extremely realistic. I just love the 1940s vibe. It was just very creepy and you know, I wasn't bored at all. I loved it, guys. I thought it was definitely the best horror film that I've seen so far in 2018. Just loved it. That's why you really can't trust these people, you know, on Amazon and say something's garbage until you check it out yourself. And I mean, it's not one of those films that's just gore and that's it. I mean, it had a solid story. I was just into it. I was engaged in the characters and I loved it. Somebody said something about them releasing another um, version of it. It's hard for me to believe there's a director cut of this because it, it's pretty gory, guys. I mean, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's like an 8. As far as gore. Love it. And we have Rambo. 2008. It's an upgrade for my DVD. Excellent picture quality on this. Love the film. It's probably one of the most violent R-rated films ever made. Or for just any film period. As far as a Hollywood film. This film definitely packs on the gore. It's just unlimited kill count. Just don't know how he got away with an R rating with this. I guess somebody got paid off because there's no way that this is an R rated film. People were talking about being NC-17 and Sly paid off the MPAA. That wouldn't shock me if that was the case because it's... This is not an R-rated film. I mean, it exceeds some NC-17 films as far as violence and gore. But this is definitely my favorite in the Rambo. Besides the, the first one, First Blood. Wasn't really crazy about the second one. Next one we have is Gothica. It's another very underrated film. Holly Berry was fantastic in this. It's a very underrated film. A lot of people, you know, they shit on it. It's not really psychological. You'd have to check it out. But I saw this in the theater. It was just, you know, blew me away. Can't give too much without giving it away. The plot points, but... It just doesn't disappoint. It's a genuinely scary film. It's like there's just something about it. I can't explain it, but imagine something comes over you and you wake up and they tell you you killed three or four people and there was a massacre and you didn't remember killing those people. That shit's scary. You know, when, when you can't control your own bodily functions or, you know, killing people, that, that would scare me. And this is definitely one of those films that hits home for me. And then we have Punisher Warzone. It's another one that just looks gorgeous on Blu-ray, guys. Oh, my God. I mean, 10 out of 10 as far as picture quality. This is another one. If you like violent films, just overly violent, people getting their heads, you know, blown off with double barrel shotguns and, you know, 
two, three hundred people get killed in this movie. It's just, it's, it's over the top, but it's done in a realistic way. And it does have that comic book vibe about it, which I really enjoyed. Not too much of a comic book feel to it, but it just, you know, you could definitely feel, it's, you could tell it's a Punisher film. And I haven't seen the special feature, so I can't tell you about that. But the film, I loved it. And, you know, the picture quality is definitely one of the better looking Blu-rays that I've ever seen. I mean, it, it looks, has that, what they call the soap opera effect. The lighting and everything is just so perfect and spot on. It looks fake or 3D. It looks almost 3D. It's that perfect. Love the film. I would definitely recommend this. We have Natural Born Killers. It's another one that is just an upgrade for my DVD. Director's Cut. This comes with a almost a 50 page booklet there. You can tell because the case is like heavy. It's got weight to it. I love this film though. I read up actually Quentin Tarantino and Oliver Stone had a falling out over this because he didn't like, I guess they rewrote, rewrote his script when Quentin wrote it and they got into a fight and Oliver Stone said, you know, he didn't say it was a piece of shit, but he said he didn't like the characters. They were like stick figures and there was no depth to the characters. And I guess they rewrote it and then Quentin got pissed off at Oliver and Oliver didn't talk to Quentin. And it was just like some soap opera, you know, high school drama and they were fighting. But I guess since then, you know, they, uh, they buried the hatchet, but... Love this film. Love it. And then we have The Gray. It's basically about a guy who gets into a plane crash. And him and a bunch of people on board have to fend off some wolves because they're in the middle of the mountains. And there's no help coming. And they have to get their own food. And... Just a brilliant film. Brilliant. Loved it. I wish there was a little bit of a uh, happy ending there at the end. It's kind of... It's a little bit sad towards the end. Because, you know... A lot of these directors, they try to make a name from them, themselves. So they... Uh, <laughs> you know, they try to grow some balls. And I guess... Uh, give you a, a downbeat ending but I really really enjoyed this for what it was I it wasn't expecting anything spectacular but I loved it looks great on blu-ray as well Liam Neeson is incredible on this too he's a really really phenomenal character actor Yeah, that's the gray. The slipcar was actually pretty hard to track down with this. We have uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane, which is kind of a post apocalyptic type film. Um, Starts off where I guess there was a, a nuclear attack and this girl's driving down the road and John Goodman's character takes her to his underground bunker where, you know, he's got an IV in her and he's helping her out. And there's another guy in there as well. And they don't know if John Goodman's character is out of his mind and just like kidnapping them because he's a weirdo or if this really happened. Not going to give anything away. Uh, just going to leave it at that. John Goodman was absolutely amazing in this movie. Just amazing. You know, I, 
with PG-13 movies, guys, I'm a little bit, like, if it's PG-13, it would take a lot for me to pick it up, just because I like, you know, violence and gore and all that, but this just blew me away. Loved it. You know, John Goodman's one of those actors. Like, he could play the bad guy. He could play the good guy equally as good. I mean, the guy is just exceptionally talented. Because, like, you're, you know, you're in this secluded area. And you know, the film basically works on atmosphere as well. And you're just like, is he nuts? Or is, is this really happening outside? And then when the end, you know, the th last three quarters of the film, you're just like, holy shit. <laughs> and that brings up my last film, The Divide, which I did not like. It's pretty much the same plot as, you know, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Um, a lot of people were saying it's extremely violent and gory and it's like torture porn. All the violence is pretty much off screen in this one. It does start off with a nuclear attack. And I guess eight or nine people are down in the basement. And, you know, there's no, they have canned foods and stuff like that. But they're just disagreeing and fighting over stupid petty bullshit. And they're getting under each other's skin. And, you know, it's basically you got some sexual assault shit happening. And... I didn't like it. I just felt like the characters were predictable. You know, they were annoying. I didn't have any sympathy towards the characters. It just didn't deliver like 10 Cloverfield Lane did, in my opinion. I just... And a lot of people were like, oh, it's just like, it's one of those sick, extreme, you know, nasty films that just... Shock for the sake of shock, but it didn't shock me at all. It was just a big letdown. That's it. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.